A part of me died when I was 8 years old. I was into FPS games like Call of Duty, just like every other kid, because it was cool. But I also had a part of me that was shy to admit that I was a weeb. I watched tons of anime and played a lot of games that looked like anime, but I had never played an anime-styled shooter, and if I ever found one, I knew it would become my favorite game. And I found it. S4 League. The concept was perfect. It had sick cosmetics and cool game modes like Touchdown, which turned the game into a crossover between guns and football. But the most captivating part of S4 was the movement. You could wall jump, you could dodge, you could fly, and that created an unlimited amount of creative ways to take fights. Every concept of the game blew my mind, and hopping on S4 was the first thing I did every day coming home from school. But there were big problems. The game was built on Korea's pay-to-win system. That meant that players could buy those sick cosmetics that I was talking about and increase their stats, making them deal more damage than non-playing players, which was stupidly uncompetitive. It was doomed to fail from the start. From rampant hackers to exploits that haven't been patched for years, continued neglect caused many people to leave. At the time, S4's decline didn't mean much to me. Being a curious child just meant I would put it down and pick up the next shiny game. But for the longest time since then, I have felt a sense of longing and an unfulfilled itch for a game like this to come back out. Yo, yo, carry you. Up, oh, Jake. What if they turn 2D anime girls? into 2D. What? I just aced. When my friend Jake introduced this game to me, I was skeptical. What kind of mobile, graphic, Paper Mario, Genshin looking ass game is this? Jake was averaging 200 ping playing the game because the servers were in China, and that piqued my interest. What made Jake so passionate about the game that he would go through all that trouble just to play? And so, on a random night at 4am, I launched Shrinova for the first time. I was pretty bored of all the games I had been playing. Valorant had been the same thing for years, Osu was getting pretty stale, and I thought, why not give this game a try? When I launched Renova, I was sent into a storyline. But sadly, I didn't get a single thing that was going on because I don't speak any Mandarin. That's gotta be the craziest tutorial I've ever seen. Oh shit. I can't read. I'm a failure as an Asian. Even though I didn't understand anything that was being said, it was cool to see world building and characters that had personality. The art and the animation were also cute. After watching the anime girls kill each other with lethal weapons while speaking Chinese, I loaded into my first game of Shrinova. The objective was similar to many tax shooters I've played before. Defend the site, kill enemies, or plant the bomb. And throughout the playthrough, the weird 2D mechanics started to make sense. Dodging, gliding, moving through tight spots. If you combine it with shooting and double jumping, there could be an endless combination of movements and techniques to take fights. As I started to get more and more into the game, a familiar feeling started to resurface. And now, here we are. Two months later, I play this game every single day on 200 ping with the goal of hitting rank 1. And remember, I am not being paid to promote this game. Because if I am, you could probably legally sue me. But with a beta test coming out in under a month and the game planning to release this year, I seriously think Shrinova has potential. Why? Well, the game is constantly updated by communicative devs, 
The cosmetics and character designs are eye-catching and non-pay-to-win, and it even has a full-fledged replay system that stores the last 100 games. Just to reiterate how insane that is, Valorant allows you to see the last 20 games and still doesn't have a replay system, despite fans asking for it for years. At its core, Shrinova is a third-person 5v5 tactical shooter. Plant the bomb, defuse the bomb, or kill each other. But it's also a culmination of some of your favorite features from recent popular titles. Maybe you like the gambling for waifus aspect of Genshin Impact. Maybe you like the gunplay from Fortnite and Apex Legends. Or maybe, just maybe, you miss the crunchiness of an Xbox Call of Duty mic. Trinova is an amalgamation of all of my favorite games in the last couple years, and it comes together to make for a cohesive playing experience. The game seems to have a place for all types of players. Competitive, casual... In my case, it kept my attention because there was a place for competition. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of player to never touch the normal or unrated option in any game. It just doesn't make me feel anything, and I want my wins to have meaning. Initially, I was breezing through the ranks, going from silver to diamond to masters with something like a 70% win rate, relying on nothing but my raw aim. But as soon as I hit masters, the top 5% of the game, I bottlenecked harder than a 4090 in a 20-year-old computer. This was my win rate when I hit masters. And this was my win rate a week later. Yeah, uh, I couldn't just abuse my aim anymore. Shinova is a really team-oriented game. But, that being said, wanna know why my win rate also got so low? Because the Chinese players of Shinova always surrender. Why? I have seen players surrender a game at 4-4. Four to four. We would go from a scoreline of 1-7, to seven, back to an even 8-8. Eight to eight. And I would be like, oh, well, six people need to vote yes for the draw to go through. Even if the five players on the other team want to draw, we'll need one from our team. Wah! What's how? The unwillingness to see a game to its finish was something that was pissing me off. I come from a background of Valorant where everyone has an ego and never draws. So some of these matches were definitely a culture shock. Also, to add on to my turmoil, there were people that straight up stopped trying in my games because I was a Y Guo Ren. Even my friend Jake, who is well liked in China because of his Genshin content, was not immune to the xenophobic treatment. And look, I understand where the players are coming from. We're playing another country's game and not able to communicate because of the language barrier. Except for the fact that we do. Despite the language barrier, we had picked up entry level Chinese over time to be able to listen and communicate with our team. Lauren, Lauren. Mama Weisha! Mama Weisha! Are you gay? You can tell because in that clip where my teammate calls me out for being a foreigner, our teammate that was acting as our leader said this. <laughs> Honestly, it's just a culture dip. But despite having 200 ping and a few mean teammates, I have had some really fun and good games. <laughs> Yeah, Shrenova is still pretty fun for the casual competitive player. But what about casual casual players? There are other game modes to choose from if you're not a sweat, or as Chinese players like to call us, pressure monsters. There's a game mode where you push a payload, kind of similar to Overwatch, but you know, I'll let them get away with it. There's the unrated mode where you also plant the bomb and all that, but you know, I'll let them get away with that too. Oh wait, did I mention the menu screen? Yeah, they're definitely never beating the Valorant allegations. But what's pretty unique about this game is that they are generous. Despite being a free-to-play player, you can rack up a lot of their purple balls currency to buy yourself some skins. Look at Michelle, she's so cute. Look at Baimo, he's so handsome. Piaoliang! Han Piaoliang! But the events? Now, those are crazy. You can win gotcha tickets, purple ball currency, and a chance to get an iPhone 15 Pro Max and an RTX 4090. For some reason, Trinova has that. Remember when I talked about how the devs were really friendly? Yeah, well, they found my Billy Billy channel, which is like Chinese YouTube where I've been posting a lot of Kalapichu content. 
and they sent me a personalized video. Let's watch. Wow, Carry You! That's quite some work you have done for us. It's so cute. We feel honored that among all the amazing shooting games in the world, you still decide to put so much passion in Street Nova. Whoa! You are now my favorite person. Woo! Let's give the spotlight on the global launch plan. We decide to kill the wait and launch Toronto. the KOL test oh, in me. early April. Which means if you follow Carry You stream, you will have early access to the game and Whoa. get to play with him. If you grow on our game during this test, you will also be granted a place in the coming technical beta test. Please. We will announce Maybe. our official website Maybe. with the registration link, April time on X and Discord. Look, buddy. You can scan the following QR code to get Guys, first scan. hand news. Scan now, it's take out your phone! Today. Thank you for watching. Thank, Thank you, Nova-chan. Thank you, Nova -chan. Carry you. See you all in April. Bye. Bye.